Hi, and welcome to our discussion of Twin Peaks Season 2, Episode 16, The Condemned Woman. So, as always, we'll give you some quick impressions up front, and then we'll follow that up with a much longer spoiler-filled discussion. So, what, what did you think of this one? I think the last minute of this episode saved it for me. I would okay. give it a B plus, A minus, if only because of that. Right, um, right. There's a lot of intrigue. I think... You know, the last few episodes have really seemed a lot like a soap opera with, yes. you know, people coming back from the dead and people coming out of comas and stuff like that. Maybe a little too much for my liking, frankly. Yeah, maybe a little too much. Yeah. But I, I think it's got a lot of that soap opera element. Sure, uh, sure. I used to watch Days of Our Lives and kind of the evil mastermind and yeah. the who brings people back to life. You know, Wyndham Earl plays that role for me. Right. Um, so, right. like I said, B plus A minus for me. Yeah, I mean, we're in the part of season two that a lot of the original fans didn't much care for. This was the part of season two where David Lynch had stepped away for a time to work on some other projects, left it in the hands of others, and a number of fans at the time didn't care for the direction. Um, I, I'd kind of count myself as one of those folks. Um, the rating suffered. Um, but yeah, I, I agree. I mean, this, this final scene... Um, is interesting, but it's also kind of controversial, too, because it's so far out there. Sure. I mean, the final scene brings back Bob. It brings me like the man from the other place. Mm -hmm. And it seems as though Josie's soul gets caught in the wood yes. of the room. Right. I mean, that's the, that's the piece that, that's so far out there. So maybe we should kind of take a step back and then work our way back to the, that point. Yeah, sure. So um, first we've got... Uh, I don't know, uh, Big Ed. Let's start with that sure. storyline. Sure. Um, Nadine comes home and basically says they ought to call the relationship. It's not going anywhere. She and Mike had a fateful evening on their away trip for the for the wrestling team. I um, really want to get Mike's input on that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. does Mike know that he had a spicy right. evening with Nadine? Uh, how old is Mike? I mean, we know Audrey's 18, but is Mike 18? Yeah. And if yeah. so, is, you know, she's like 30-something at least. Yeah, mid to late 30s. Uh, sure. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so that actually sets things up pretty nicely for Big Ed because, I mean, obviously he's not broken up, broken up about this. I mean, Nadine has given him the gift that he's been looking for for the last 20 years. So he promptly proposes to, to uh, Norma. Yeah. And she, uh, obviously, she, you know, without explicitly saying so, I mean, she's up for that. Yeah, and she goes to the jail <laughs> yeah. to ask Hank for uh, for a, a divorce as well. Right. Now, Hank says, well, if you give me an alibi, I'll give you a divorce. Right. And she said, I'm, t I'm not going to lie to people. Right. You know, you're just going to give me the divorce. Jerk. Right. Sure. Um, sure. Hank is in jail for a number of reasons, uh, but he's also there because he's, you know, he's uh, he's going to be going to prison for a long time. Right, right. Yeah. I mean, he tried to make a deal with the sheriff uh, to give him Andrew's uh, killer. Right. Uh, you know, we all know that Andrew's not actually dead, so it hardly matters. Right. Uh, right. But he kind of threatens him and says, you know, it basically tells him that it's Josie and, right. uh, you know, that you're, you don't want to put your girlfriend in danger. Right. Um, you know, the sheriff does have a soft spot when it comes to Josie. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want, even though the, the evidence is mounting against her in a number of cases, whether right. it's actual evidence or not, it hardly matters. Right, I mean, because out of respect for Truman, I mean, even Cooper is going above and beyond the call of duties, working with Albert to ensure that there's just this, you know, this overwhelming mountain of evidence suggesting that Josie is the woman who tried to kill him. Yeah, absolutely. And that she's the woman who killed uh, Patrick or whatever the heck his name is, Mr. Lee. Jonathan, yeah. Jonathan. Right. Um... And that he killed Andrew Packard, or Andrew mm -hmm. Packard. So, right, right. yeah, I mean, uh, I think all of the evidence is there. I, You know, Catherine Martell is clearly setting up Josie and setting up a lot of people, yes. actually. Yeah, the, I mean, there are multiple schemes going on here with different... I mean, because 
Of course, we've also got Wyndham Earl setting up a number of people here, yeah. too, at the same time. I really enjoyed the scene with <laughs> with Andrew Packard uh, in the elevator where he reveals himself right. not to be dead. Right. Uh, right. It, it's very well done, I thought. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, so this is an episode that's very intensively about the Josie, Catherine, Andrew, Packard, Thomas Eckhart um, subplot that's been going on. But we also have an end to uh, Donna and James's relationship. Uh, at least temporarily. Yeah, at least temporarily. He's going off to, you know, sow his wild oats and have adventures. Donna's going back to finish high school. Right. Um, uh, one would presume. Uh, and she's going back to her perfect family in Twin Peaks in a lot of ways. I thought it very telling that when he said, I love you, she didn't reply. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, she replied, but not, not as, I, love, I you. love you too. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's something to watch for. Then we also have Wyndham Earl and his three notes going sure. to his angels, which is a very like Charlie's Angels reference of trying right, to bring right. the, the three ladies of Twin Peaks together. And um, so Shelly, Donna, and Audrey right. are all meeting up at the Roadhouse at 9.30, and they, they get their sheets of paper, they put it together into an entire poem written right. in uh, Leo's hand, which, right. you know, right. whatever. Um, and Wyndham Earl is there uh, ready to, you know, do yeah. something. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's really too bad that none of them told anyone about this. Yeah, I mean, Donna um, Donna doesn't tell anybody about no. it. Uh, Shelly sees it, and... and or Na or no Norma saw Shelly's. Yeah, Norma yeah. saw Shelly's. Um, but, but I don't think anybody knows that Donna's going there, so... No, and Audrey did, didn't tell anyone either. Yeah. Um, the Audrey situation in this episode is interesting. Mm -hmm, because we mm -hmm. have Billy Zane playing this kind of old family friend who is maybe a little more age appropriate, possibly. Yeah. Though I he's mean, older. Well, it's funny because I, I I don't know how old Billy Zane was in 1990, but he's really young to have done all of the things that he's supposed to have done. Yes. I mean, because so he was taken in as, as a young man. Um, I think he was... Uh, a lumberjack or a carpenter or something and then he's founded his own version of like Bain Capital or something where you know he <laughs> you know he rescues these like bankrupt companies saves them restructures them and then promptly sells them for you know a massive profit but I mean gosh he's he looks like he's in his mid-20s to me yeah he does look pretty young yeah I mean he says he has so. this picture of Audrey when she was 10 in pigtails playing Heidi right. um you know to to have held on to that picture for so long if he was you know an adult when he got the picture would have been odd but if he was kind of a you know tween ish maybe he's like five or five yeah. years older than her right that still is kind of creepy yeah, it's odd. I mean, so so he's been brought in as this kind of outsider um, to to help them. I, I I actually thought that that Ben Horn's plan to uh, uh, stymie Catherine's Ghostwood development, you know, to save the the Pine Weasel was was pretty funny. Um, you know, but it's still not a way forward for Horn Industries no. because. I mean, best case scenario, they screw Catherine over, and then maybe she would sell them the land back or something. It's not clear how they actually profit from it, um, but it's a revenge fantasy. And then the throwaway line that he's thinking about running for the Senate was kind of funny. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, but ultimately, you know, the, the big setup kind of at the end with... Uh, with Josie killing right. uh, Thomas Thomas Eckert, yeah. uh, Cooper coming in, pulling a gun on her, right. her kind of sh pointing the gun at at Cooper, right. Right. then the sheriff coming in, pointing the gun at Josie, and Josie basically having what seems like a, a heart attack of some sort. Yeah, I mean, because before <laughs> Cooper had his vision, it seemed to me almost as though in a fit of stress or hysteria or something, Josie kind of willed herself to die. Yeah. Because, I mean, she basically said, look, I, I'm not going to, to jail for, for any of these crimes. Yeah. And then we have this scene before before Cooper's vision of the sheriff holding Josie, you know, crying about right. her death. And then they fade away. A spotlight is on the bed. And Bob kind of cackling right. starts kind of 
climbing up As over he does. the bed. Right. Um, and saying, like, how did Josie die, Coop? Right, right, right. Or what happened to Josie? What happened to Josie, yeah. Coop? What happened yeah. to Josie? Which is like, I mean, did you have something to do with it, Bob? Right. Who right. killed Josie? <laughs> like, Josie seems to have died of natural causes. Right. But uh, uh, clearly, uh, Bob is in, implying right. that that's not what happened. Right, and then we see the man from another place doing his enigmatic dance on the bed briefly. Yeah, and then <clears throat> we have... And then we see Josie. Then we see Josie. We have this the a pan over to the, the bedside table drawer mm-hmm. knob, and... Basically, her kind of in the wood, uh, you know, screaming, trying to right. get out, it seems right. like. Now, you know, the the one-armed man had said that Bob was, you know, was in this building with, you know, made of wood with a mm-hmm. lot of rooms or people. You know, if Bob is connected to this building somehow or to the woods or to the wood that the building is created mm-hmm. from, mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. might make sense that he's able to pull kind of souls down with him. Possible. You know, who knows? It's a little Freddy Krueger esque. Yeah, I mean, because my interpretation when Mike revealed that was that at that moment, Leland Palmer sure. was present in the Great Northern. Sure. <clears throat> but it, but it is interesting to think about if maybe Bob has some deeper connection to the Great Northern. Yeah, but the the other thing it reminds me of I watched an episode of Grimm recently where there was this tree that was kind of eating people alive mm-hmm. and using the people as sustenance, and their okay. faces would kind of emerge uh, okay. in the trunk of the tree. Right. And her face kind of being frozen in the in the knob on the drawer kind of reminded me of that. Yeah, I, I like that that bit because you know at, at first it's just her face and she's kind of looking puzzled but then it dawns on her there's horror she's screaming you know and then the face you know with some 1990s era cgi kind of bulging out from the (laughs) the the knob but then ultimately it kind of fading back into just like a knot in the wood yeah or being the the pattern in the wood on the knob um in that kind of misshapen horrified screaming face which was a, you know, I mean, th- I thought that was pretty horrific and effective. Absolutely, and if and if Josie, you know, her body died, but her soul is in this kind of limbo right. state of right. it's trapped in the Great Northern. That also kind right. of then reminds me of uh, the Nicholson film um, with the hotel and the why the Shining. Not? The Shining, yes, right. exactly, with like these spirits kind of caught into the the hotel. Yeah, I mean it. It, it is interesting. I mean, because presumably, I mean, Truman detected that her body was dead. And yeah. So that doesn't leave Josie with a place to return to, even if a, a means could be found to extricate her soul from the wood. I mean, where would it go? Yeah. Exactly. So. Like I said, this last section really uh, won me over on this episode, yeah. if only because I think we're we're getting a kind of transition back into some of the more supernatural, yeah. creepier elements of the show, uh, and with the return of Bob. Yeah, I mean, the the only complaint that I know at least some have made is that it it's kind of a wacky idea to trap a soul in a piece of wood. Uh, there have been wackier things. True. True. But it's, you know, it, it's one of those kind of things where we can we can accept on some level the spirit possession piece with, with Bob and Mike. Um, but to actually wrench someone's soul out of their body and stash it in a piece of wood is another level out there. Sure. But the log lady would tell you it's not so unrealistic. Well, you know, that's actually a really interesting connection because um, her log is obviously aware of a lot of things maybe even that normal humans are not and can communicate with her and perhaps with other seers um so might there be someone's soul in that log yeah exactly interesting things to think about yep thanks thanks